Behind me is an engraving published by Knoedlers in 1857 that shows New York as it appeared when uh, Michael Knoedler first came to this country in 1846. This is the city into which he began the process of importing contemporary European art. Knoedler was sent to New York by Adolf Goupil in 1846. Adolf Goupil was a successful print publisher and art gallery owner who was looking for new markets and who, uh, through various American connections that he had, determined that uh, New York would be a good place to expand. And so he sent his trusted 23-year-old assistant here, and within 18 months or so, in uh, 1848, the firm opened for business. There was a growing interest on the part of collectors in America in European art, contemporary European art, of which formerly they had been quite suspicious. By the late 1850s in New York, there was a growing market for French art, both uh, art that was imported into this country by dealers such as Knoedler, and uh, also art being made in New York by a few European artists who had come to this country to profit from the rising interest. And then as time went on, their offerings broadened and both led American taste and reflected American taste. I think of Catherine Lorillard Wolfe as uh, the first modern patron of art museums in America. In the first place, in 1870, she was the only woman among the original subscribers to the fund for establishing the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Secondly, in the same year, she made her first purchases from the Knoedler Gallery. These were purchases of European art. And then gradually, her interest shifted over into French art. Ultimately, she formed quite a large collection of European art, particularly of the Paris Salon, which she left to the Metropolitan along with an endowment of $200,000 for maintaining the collection and adding to it. And so uh, she was really the first patron who uh, left both her collection and a sum of money uh, which was at the disposal of the trustees of the Metropolitan to be used for augmenting the museum's collection. And then immediately following the Civil War, there was the huge boom in railroad construction all across America. And one of the great railroad builders in America was Collis P. Huntington. Mr. Huntington himself collected art somewhat along the lines of that collected by Catherine Lorillard Wolfe, which is to say uh, European, principally French, academic art. In midlife, he married a woman named Arabella Worsham, who was a fascinating and indomitable character. And after Mr. Huntington died, she continued art collecting. She actually refined her husband's collection. And then ultimately, around 1910, she married her husband's nephew, Henry Edwards Huntington, and encouraged him to become really a major collector of 18th century British portraits. And it's that collection that the public can see today at the Huntington Library in San Marino, California.
You can't consider the history of art collecting and the history of art museum patronage in America without devoting a lot of attention to Pierpont Morgan. Morgan was one of the greatest collectors, if not the greatest collector, ever to stride the pages of American history. The scope of his collections was phenomenal. He wasn't afraid to buy whole collections, and he wasn't afraid to pay high prices. He knew what he wanted, and he got it. He established the Pierpont Morgan Library for his great collections of rare books and manuscripts. He left a significant part of his art collection to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and a large portion of his collection of decorative arts entered the permanent collection of the Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford, Connecticut, where Morgan had been born and raised. Louisine Havermeyer was, uh, in my judgment, the most important woman in the history of American collecting and American art patronage. She was born Louisine Elder. Her family was in the sugar business. And through the daughter of a prominent Philadelphia engraver, she met Mary Cassatt. And Mary Cassatt really opened her eyes to the work of the Impressionists, particularly Edgar Degas. And Louisine Elder really fell in love with the work of Degas. She married a business associate of her family, and the two of them were truly uh, a force to be reckoned with. He, with his fortune also derived from sugar refining, indulged her taste and supported her interests. And she formed probably the greatest collection of Impressionist paintings that existed in America at the time. She, Louisine Havemeyer, was single-handedly responsible for introducing the taste for French Impressionism into America. She left a certain amount of her collection to the Metropolitan Museum, but then her children, who inherited the rest of the collection, joined forces and contributed many, many more paintings to the Metropolitan, so that today most of the great Impressionist works you see in the Metropolitan came from this early Impressionist collection formed by the Havermeyers. The fascinating thing about Mrs. Havermeyer toward the end of her life was that her interest in uh, women's suffrage really intensified, and she became a very prominent, very forceful suffragette. This was late in her life. Had her life ended in her early 30s, she would already have been a major American patron. We come now to two other titans of art collectors and art patrons in the first half of the 20th century in America, Henry Clay Frick and Andrew Mellon. Both were from Pittsburgh. They were friends from youth. By the middle of the 1890s, Henry Clay Frick was really well on his way to becoming a significant collector of fine art in America. Andrew Mellon started a little later in his life and is believed to have been very strongly influenced by his friend Henry Clay Frick. The two shared affinities for the same kind of art. And this is rather dramatically demonstrated by the fact that they owned pendant landscapes by Turner. You can see here is Turner's Mortlake Terrace uh, summer evening, painted in 1827. And in this view of the library at what is now the Frick Collection at 1 East 70th Street, you can see in the background Turner's Mortlake Terrace early summer morning. Of course, as everyone knows, Henry Clay Frick founded the Frick Collection, and Andrew Mellon founded the National Gallery of Art in Washington.